Hey, what's up friends? It's James. Welcome back for another power yoga session. With this class, we take 60 minutes and we get to focus on our strength, on flexibility, and on balance. But we take everything slow and deep and really tie into your breath. I want you to start out on your belly. So come down, get your hips comfortable to press to the floor, and then just relax like you were laying out at the beach. You could have your chin or your forehead to your hands or one side of your head to the floor or the other. And once you feel into that relaxed state, go ahead and close your eyes. We'll do a couple of deep breaths just to get ourselves centered. Exhale, release all the way down to empty. Breathe into your low belly and your low back, to your mid-abdomen and your mid-back, all the way to your chest and shoulders. Once you've got that full breath, just hold and relax. And then take a slow exhale for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Right on, let's do that again. Breathe into your low belly and low back. Take it to your mid abdomen, your mid back. All the way to the chest, all the way to the shoulders. Hold the full breath, the biggest breath you've taken today. Relax on it. And then that slow exhale for nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ujjayi breathing. So slow inhale through the nose like you're sipping the air in from the bottom to the top. Slow exhale back out the nose like you're fogging up a mirror. And as you work this Ujjayi breath, what you want to start to create is the sound of a hollow wind in your head, or some people just call this an ocean wave sound. And as you focus in on your breath, you are allowing the mind to take a break from fixing, solving, and changing, and you're giving the mind this simple tool just to focus on the inhale and to focus on the exhale. So allow your breath to be your guide for your practice today. And then simply take what works for me and leave the rest behind. Start to bend your knees, picking your feet up in space, and then slowly circle out your ankles, windshield wiping the legs out. This is really nice for your low back, great to warm up the knee joints, and you can get into the ankles, you can get into your toes and into your feet as well. You can take clockwise circles or just change up to counterclockwise as it feels good to you. And at times those heels are gonna come closer in towards the body. At times you're gonna extend your feet more towards the back of the mat. Awesome, let the feet relax down. And then just for a gentle stretch in your spine, we'll start to lift into Sphinx Pose. So press into your elbows. Forearms are down to the ground. You can use the bellies of the forearms or you can use the edges of your forearms. Lift up tall through the spine, create length through the back of your neck. This is a great place to stay as you work those inhales and those exhales. You can feel it right in your low back. So imagine all that time you're spending seated at your desk. This is a great spot that just hits that lumbar spine. We'll start to take the, the chin and just twist over the left shoulder. And you might let your head slightly tilt down into the left. Feeling that breath all the way down to the end of your exhales. And now twist and just take your gaze across your right shoulder. And as you're holding to the right, you might let your chin slightly drop down, head tilt slightly down into the right. Remember, inhales create space in our bodies, and on the exhales, we release into that space we create. Bring the head back to center. You're welcome to leave it upright with some length through the back of it, or gently let the weight of the head come forward. You want to dig a little bit of a lift up through your shoulders, and then as you relax the weight of the head down, you might let your chin just move a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right.
Awesome. And then just release all the way down. We're going to lift either up to a plank or to tabletop and then shift the body back into down dog, letting the hips come back up in space, creating an A-frame shape and slowly walking the dog out. So you just let one heel reach down towards the ground as opposite knee bends. Spread out into the circle of your palm and into your fingers. Hands are slightly wider than shoulders distance, just right at about shoulders distance. Your feet are right at about hip bone distance and the hips are lifting back up. Weight of your head is relaxed. Let those biceps tone into center line like you're holding a beach ball between your arms. And rather than that locking out your elbows, just a really slight micro bend in the elbows. Okay, bend both of your knees, stretch the hips back up as far as they go, and then start to take that bend out of your knees, really drawing the heels down towards the ground behind you. That feels awesome. Stay with your breath. We're going to take baby steps on the balls of your feet up to your hands. And you can stay on your palms. You can go to your fists. You can also move to your fingertips at any point in time. Just leave the hands connected all the way to the point that you're in a forward fold at the top of your mat. Feet at hip bone distance. Weight of the head relaxed. And then just give your head a slow nod, yes. And take a slow side to side nod, no, letting the weight of the head just relax down. With the weight heavy in your arms and your head, vertebrae by vertebrae start to wind up to standing. Head will be the very last thing that come up and when your head does come up, Take that inhale to reach your arms wide, stretch up tall in space, lift up through your heart. And on your exhale, just bring your hands back down into the heart center right at standing. Awesome. From that strong root, inhale to reach arms up, breathe into mountain. And then when your exhale comes, hinge out from your hips and take that slow mo swan dive to forward fold. You let that bend come into your knees to really release the spine down. Awesome. Inhale halfway up, press to your shins, lengthen the spine, strengthen through the shoulders, and then plant your hands, come back into a plank. Awesome. Find the hands right underneath your shoulders, those biceps slightly toned in, elbows have that micro bend, hips are lifting up on your shoulders, and you're right on the balls of your feet. Take a breath here and on your next exhale, shift forward and slowly lower all the way down to your belly, just a slow-mo release with the length of that breath. Hips can comfortably press to the ground so that now on an inhale, we can reach up into our locust pose. And I always think about this, this reminds me of those surfboard muscles if you've ever been on a surfboard before. That part where you're trying to paddle beyond the break and you're trying to lift your head up to look forward, but then you're trying to lift your legs up out of the water and then you're trying to lift your chest obviously up so your arms can swim. From here, interlace your fingers at your knuckles and then reach your knuckles to the wall behind you. Add a slight bend into your elbows, they're slightly lifting up. And remember, you don't need to crane your chin forward and get your neck in a weird position. You're lifting up through the entirety of your chest, so it's lifting your gaze up and you're keeping that length through the back of your neck. Okay, if you lost your breathing, bring it right back in. Nice work. Just doing the work with your breath, almost there. Next exhale, let's lower down. We're going to take that press up to down dog. So you're either working your way through tabletop or through plank and then shifting our hips back and up in space, finding downward facing dog. Okay, think about those alignment points as you lift back out in your down dog. By the way, distance of your hands to your feet in down dog is very similar to a plank. That's why I like taking plank to down dog. You might come in slightly closer once you hit your down dog, but that plank always gives you the best info. Leave the left foot down, inhale righty, back and up in space. And as your right leg lifts, you're trying to press your heel back up behind you. Front of your right hip bone is simply pressing down and back in space. 
Watch that you're not sinking down into your left hip or your left elbow. Stay really strong in those arms. And as you're pressing your right heel back and up, that's my reminder not to sink down into the left hip. Use that left leg to press off of to reach your right heel back and up. Next exhale, we're stepping up low lunge position. Get a nice long stance from the front of the mat to the back. Once you've got it set up, inhale high crescent lunge. Awesome. Think about your front knee is bent at 90. Starting to bring that right thigh parallel to the ground. Back left heel is off the ground. You're on the ball of your left foot. As you're pressing strong into your legs, you want to feel your thighs toning back to center, stabilizing. With that front right knee, you're pressing down through your leg. Your upper leg is wrapping around that knee joint, and then you've got your glute engaged, pulling back up away from the knee, providing plenty of support as we load the weight into it. Arms are lifted up, and to open through your chest, we're letting the pinkies go forward, thumbs back. Fingertips are to the sky, but your arms are plugged into your shoulder sockets. You're pulling the biceps back to frame your ears, and that is setting up that lift through your chest. If you're not breathing, find that ujjayi breath. Hands to heart center, that's gonna be an inhale. Now on your exhale, just hinge slightly forward and twist open to the right, placing your left elbow onto the top and outside of that right thigh. And as you press your elbow to your thigh, you're spinning your heart open towards that right wall. So if I show you this and open up towards the camera here, you want to lift up to your chest and you want to feel that your sternum is lifting up to the same knuckles that, excuse me, the same level that the knuckles of your thumbs are on. Your exhale is where you're going to be able to twist slightly deeper into it. Stay with it. We got like two more rounds of breath before we take our next move. You're doing great. Nice. So get down to the end of your breath, and then with your inhale, rise back up into that high crescent lunge. Take that deep breath in, lift up through it, and then warrior two on your exhale. So knife edge the left foot down to the ground. You might open your stance up a little bit longer from the front of your mat to your back, and then open up through your arms. Make sure your torso's not shifting forward with your right arm. Your torso is straight up in space, and then equal extension of your arms from that place. Open up through your chest. Just let those shoulder heads release down behind you. And then press strong and firm into both of your feet. Let the thighs take that little tone back to center, stabilizing. It's a really nice spot in Warrior Two where you are opening through your stance. So you are taking stre stretch, right? You are working on your flexibility. But we're doing it in a lunge position, so we're also working with that strength. Okay, on an exhale, hinge forward, bring your right forearm to your right thigh, lift up to your left arm. So we're taking this into that extended side angle pose. You want to watch that your left hip's not popping up in space. You're lowering that left hip on level with your right, and your right side body is lifting away from that right thigh as you press that into it. You can twist your gaze to look up and back a little bit. That's awesome. That's just a reminder to open back through your chest here. Okay, inhale back to your warrior two. Stay in that lunge. Turn your right hand to the sky. Bring left hand to your hip or wrap it behind you. And then for reverse warrior, reach the right fingertips tall. Bend your elbow and just take your gaze slightly up, tilting your head back. You could also turn your gaze to the left or back down to your left foot. But you're really opening from that right hip crease all the way up through your right elbow, all the way through your right arm. Focus your gaze and stay with your breath. Yep, if you're coming up out of your lunge, get right back into it. Press to that deep spot. Okay, almost there.
So you take your inhale to your, your reverse warrior, and on your exhale, bring your right hand down to your thigh. Take the left hand, press it on top of the right, spin onto the ball of your left foot so your left heel's off the ground, and then we're taking a staged version of warrior three. So you're gonna tilt forward, and then you're gonna press into your right thigh, and you're creating capital T with your body. Gaze is down to the ground, crown of the head is reaching forward. Your back left heel is lifting up on level with your hips, and then you're pressing back through it as you flex your left toes towards the ground, so front of the left hip bone is pointing down. Make sure you're not locking that right leg. You're extending it, but we're not in a locked position, right? We're using the strength around the knee. Shoulder blades get to tone in towards one another as you press the arms down into the right leg, so you're supporting that upper spine. Nice, this is great. And you're just focusing your gaze. If you fall out of it, no worries, try it again. Okay, so for chair pose, try to let your left foot step up, meet your right, and sit back all in one motion. You can have your feet at hip bone distance or big toes together with space back between your heels. Let your sit bones reach down and back and extend those arms up. And similar to how we did with that high lunge position, you're letting the arms pull back and plugging them into the shoulder sockets. You can always open your arms up wider into goal pose. Get strong in those legs, support your knees, get strong in your glutes, and then circle your hands to your heart center and same twist that we did earlier in lunge. So breathe in, and on your exhale, you twist open to the right. So that left elbow comes onto the top and outside of your right thigh. So opening that towards camera, we've got the hands right here, and you're lifting your sternum up to the same level as the knuckles of your thumbs. Watch that your left knee and right knee aren't leaning to the side, collapsing to center, or twisting. Keep that base really strong below you. A couple more rounds of breath. You're doing awesome. Nice. Take the weight to your right foot. Inhale your arms and your left knee up. Let's explore one-legged mountain. Left knee is bent at 90. Right foot is pressed to the ground. Fingertips are tall. If you want, extend that left leg forward as you lift up to your thigh. Avoid leaning back, so pretend you're pressing your left foot into the wall in front of you. Plug those arms into your shoulders. One more inhale, lifts it up, and on the exhale, just bring your left foot to the ground, hands into your heart center. Okay, at the top of your diving board, inhale to reach up into your mountain pose, breathe in, and on your exhale, hinge out from your hips and create that swan dive down into your forward fold. Inhale halfway up, lengthen the spine, Plant the hands, move back to your plank, your choice to go right to down dog, or exhale halfway down to hover in Chaturanga Dandasana, press to the tops of your feet and inhale upward facing dog. So up dog, is a, it, you are suspending the weight of your body just on the tops of the feet and the hands in a back bend, lifting up through your chest, rolling out through your shoulders, letting those biceps tone in, and from here, we can tuck the toes and lift back up and meet in our down dog. Okay, friends, couple rounds of breath, getting that down dog. Right on, when you're ready, take the left leg back up in space, find your three-legged down dog. Again, think about you're pressing your left heel up behind you in space, connecting to that wall. So you're pressing off your right leg to reach and lift. Front of your left hip bone is pointing down and back, arms are nice and strong, head is relaxed. Nice breathing, biceps toned in to center line, clutching that imaginary beach ball. Pressing the circle of the palm to the ground, spread through your fingers. One more inhale. On the exhale, step up, low lunge position. Okay, once you've got the length of it, rise up, take that high lunge. Arms extend up nice and tall. 
let the right heel pull forward. You're on the ball of the right foot. As your right thigh comes forward, left thigh pulls back to meet it. Again, think about how you're supporting your left knee. Press down into the foot. Let that upper leg, your quad, wrap around your knee as you engage it. Let your glute as you engage it pull back up away from your knee. And then set those arms up. Pinkies forward, thumbs back. Biceps are framing your ears. Plug the arms down into the shoulder sockets. And listen to that sound your breath creates. Okay, circle your hands to heart center. Take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, just a hinge forward and twist open to the left, right elbow to the top outside of your left thigh. And as you're taking that twist, again, opening through the chest here, you're stacking that top left shoulder over the bottom right shoulder. Taking your gaze a little up and back helps you to remember to create that stack. And if you find yourself wobbling or wiggling here, no worries, right? You are balancing inside of that lunge. Okay, two more rounds of breath. Get all the way down to the end of the exhale. And with your inhale, rise back up, high crescent lunge, and open into your warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. So a knife edge of the right foot to the ground. Toes are pointing to the right. Open your stance up a little bit if you want. And as you get into this lunge, you're opening through your legs nice and strong. Spine is straight up in space. Extend those arms out from center line. Think about rather than shoulder heads curling or caving in, you're getting this really beautiful posture, opening the shoulder heads up on the back. Left sit bone is tucked underneath your body. You're sending that left knee, those left toes forward. You're toning everything back and in. You're strong off that back right leg and just gazing out across the front fingertips and breathing. Okay, breathe into it. And on your next exhale, extended side angle pose. Bringing left forearm to press down to your left thigh, right arm lifts up. And really, it's not a lean into your thigh. The press down into it, there's not even that much pressure. You could lift your left elbow away from it and keep that shape of your left side body lifting away from your left thigh. If it helps, turn your gaze slightly up and back, helping to open that right shoulder back and up in space. Watch that the back right hip's not popping up. Get down into your lunge and work with the shape of it. You got this. Stay with your breathing. So as we rise into warrior two on an inhale, you're staying really strong in the shape and then turning your left palm to the sky, right hand to your hip, maybe even your thigh or wrap behind you. Left arm extends up tall at that little bend to your elbow. Your head can fall back a little bit in space, but we've got a straight line from your hip crease up through your side body all the way up through that elbow. Again, gaze could also go to the right or back down to your right foot. There's a tendency that I see some people leaning back in space with their spine. Just your head and your shoulders are, are falling a little bit back, right? They're taking that tilt. If you came out of your lunge, get a little bit deeper into it, almost there. Nice, so take one more inhale, breathe in on it. When your exhale comes, place your left hand on top of your left thigh. Bring the right hand to press on the top of that, and then you're going to twist so you're on the ball of your right foot. Your back right heel is lifted. Lean slightly forward, and then we're finding this capital T shape in space with the body. So the crown of the head is reaching forward, and then your back right heel is pressing to the wall behind you. Lift your heel up on level with your hips. Flexion through your toes, toes point down to the ground. Front of the right hip bone is pointing down at the ground. Let the gaze go down so the crown of the head is reaching forward. Tone your shoulder blades slightly in, so supporting that upper spine. 
arms are pressing down into that left thigh. Nice breathing. Out of this staged warrior three, we're going to see if we can just let that right foot step up to meet the left into our chair. Let those sit bones reach backwards and down so the weight's in your heels. Bring those arms up. Plug the arms into your shoulder sockets. Maybe you open your arms up wider to begin with if you like. Okay, and if you're doing your big feet, your big toes rather, you want to, together, you want to bring your ankle bones, knees, and thighs all at center line if you practice with that style. Bring your hands to your heart, deep breath in. When that exhale comes, you've got your twist to the left, right elbow onto the top and outside of your left thigh. Lifting that chest up in space. Gazes to the left or even opening up uh, towards the sky a little bit and slightly backwards. Watch that the knees aren't caving or twisting. Oh, you got it. You got it. Okay, and then the weight to your left foot. Inhale your arms and your right knee up one-legged mountain. You want to lift that right knee up tall in space. Press through your left foot, extend through the fingertips. You want to press your heel forward as you lift upwards through the thigh. So not leaning back, going forward. One more inhale lifts you up, and on your exhale, bring the foot to the ground. Take your hands into your heart center. At the top of your mat, inhale to reach the arms wide and tall, breathe in mountain. And on your exhale, hinge out from the hips and take your swan dive down to your forward fold. Inhale halfway up, lengthen through the spine, tone shoulders in. Exhale, refold, and then take the feet to hip bone distance if they are not there. Hook your peace sign fingers around your big toes so the knuckles are to the ground and the palms are facing one another. Or you can walk your hands underneath your feet for gorilla pose with the back of the hands to the ground and then your feet on top of your palms with your toes touching your wrists. And then this is a bind forward fold. Inside of a bind, you get to push and pull. And what we're trying to do here is bring some more length into our spine and create some more length through the back of the legs here. Remember, the weight of the head is released. So if you have your peace sign fingers around your big toes, you're pressing your toes down into your hands and pulling back against the toes. And then if you're in that gorilla pose, we're doing something similar, but it's just with the entire hand and the entire foot. You're doing great with that breath. Nice. Release the hands. Take that inhale to come halfway up. Tone your shoulders in. And then plant the hands Go to your plank, your choice. You can go to down dog or exhale halfway down. Press the top to the feet. Inhale upward facing dog. And then tuck the toes and reach back to down dog. Inhale right leg back up, three-legged down dog. And then when you're ready, you're going to open the hip and bend the knee. Drape your toes down over to the left as your knee lifts up. You're pointing the front of your right hip bone to the right wall. Your knee is lifting tall and you're bending it so your heel is coming in towards your sit bones. You want to watch that your left heel is not twisting to the left, it's straight back behind you, and you're not sinking deep into your left shoulder so you're nice and strong in your base.
Right on. On an exhale, step the foot up in between your hands. Find a low lunge position. Once you've got that low lunge position into place, we're going to take our rise up into a high crescent lunge. Breathe in nice and deep. And we'll do a twist, but this time it's going to be a vertical twist where you've got your right hand behind you and your left arm forward. Spine is straight up in space. So a little bit different than when you were pressing off. And if you want, start to lower your back knee a little bit deeper into this, where it's still off the ground, but you've just taken that stance and made it slightly deeper in space. Nice breathing, friends. Gazes to the right, or even twisting back across where those right fingertips are reaching. Get down to the end of the exhale, and on your inhale, we're going to rise all the way up into our one-legged mountain, bringing your arms and your left knee with you. So right foot is your brace. You're lifting that left knee up tall in space, bent at 90. We're going to move into a figure four balance from here. So this is a, a one-legged chair in your right leg. Your left ankle goes over the top of your thigh, and you start to drop your sit bones back. Hands can come to your heart center. You could also do one hand to knee, one hand to heel. Now strengthen around that ankle. So let your toes flex back to your shin. Let your knee gently flex down. Sit bones are dropping back so that that right thigh is dropping a little closer down to the ground. Stay with it. What I love with this is you're getting a nice hip opener at the same time that you're practicing that balance and then finding that strength in that squat in just your right leg. Last couple rounds of breath. From the end of your breath, inhale, rise back up, one-legged mountain. And on your exhale, we're going to swim all the way back to a low lunge position. Hands frame your right foot, left foot back behind you. And then walk your right foot over to the left and drop your right knee to the right. So we're setting up pigeon. Let your left foot walk a little bit backwards in space. The top of the foot is down. Press up to your fingertips. And you want your right knee to be to the outside of your right hand. You're welcome to stay here, pressing to the ground. You could also try bringing the hands to your hips, finding that strength in your legs. Or like we did earlier from locust pose, interlace your fingers at your knuckles and let your knuckles pull back. Elbows slightly bend and lift up. This is that king pigeon, Raja Kapatasana. If you've been reaching the arms back, you can just bring the hands back in front of you and everybody walk down into your pigeon. So bring your forearms to the ground. You can have the top of your right foot or the side of the right foot to the ground. And you can bring your right shin parallel to the top of your mat for the most intense, or you can angle it away. Your heel is moving closer to center over time, closer to where your navel is. Check that the front of your left thigh is pointing straight down to the ground. We don't want to roll and sit down into the right hip. The right sit bone, the right hip is off of the ground on level with the left. This is a big stretch for that right hip. Use your breath. It's a great way to help release tension. It might be directly related to that hip stretch or it might be indirectly related, like you might be tensing your hands or your arms. And you take that deep breath and it reminds you to relax out. Nice 
Nice, friends. Get down to the end of that exhale. Press up to your hands. We're meeting in three-legged down dog. Right leg lifts up and back. You're welcome to open the hip and bend the knee or lengthen through the leg or pump out through it. And then you can go right to down dog or you can shift forward to a three-legged plank. Have that right heel pointing back in space. Hands right over your shoulders. Breathe in. Exhale halfway down to chaturanga. Press to the tops of your feet. Inhale, upward facing dog. Tuck the toes, lift back to down dog. Nice friends, couple rounds of breath. We're gonna take that on the other side. Good work. Perfect, so left leg pulls back and up in space. Find that three-legged down dog. And now we're gonna create scorpion tail on this side. So bend the knee, the front of your left hip bone is pointing to the left. Lift it high and then drape the toes to the right so you're bringing that right heel closer to your sit bones. Again, watch that you're not sinking or twisting into your right shoulder or dipping. And then watch that that right heel is not spinning to the right. On an exhale, Step left foot up between your hands, find low lunge. Inhale brings us to our high crescent lunge. And then on that exhale, you're gonna take your twist to your left, a vertical twist this time, left arm behind you, right arm forward. Palms open to face that left wall. Spine is straight up, maybe bend your back knee to hover a little bit more off the ground. Just to take a little bit of a deeper lunge if you're feeling it today. Increase that strength, that support. And use your breath, friends. Last round of breath here. Okay, come back forward, and then lift up to your one-legged mountain, bringing that right knee. I'm laughing because it was a little bit of a wobble lift, which is fine. We're here just to play with our balance. So left foot is your base. Arms and right knee lifted up. And now take your right ankle over the top of your left knee or thigh and find that one-legged chair. We're creating figure four here. Nice hip opener again for this right leg. So you want to find that strength around your right ankle. Flex your toes towards your shin. Let your knee gently flex down towards the ground. Hands to heart center or one hand to knee, one hand to heel, and plenty of strength on that left leg as we get into our squat. Nice. So from the end of your exhale, inhale your arms and your right knee back up. And on the exhale, we'll swim back into our low lunge position. Walk your left foot over to the right side of your mat. Drop your left knee over to the left. Slide your right leg back a little bit. Top of the foot is to the ground. And then when you press to your hands, you want your left knee to be to the outside of your left hand. Keep the fingertips rooted or hands can come to your hips. Or you could reach, uh, extend, interlace the fingers at your knuckles and extend your knuckles back behind you as you slightly bend and lift upwards through your elbows. And shining forward. This is a great name for this one. Is just that bound, proud pigeon. Stay with it. When you're feeling complete with this side, fingertips to the ground, and then you're walking down to your forearms, letting the weight of the head come down to your hands, to a block, or to the floor. Again, top of the left foot or the side of the left foot can be rooted to the ground. Okay. 
And watch that you're not sitting down into that left hip. And you've got the front of your right thigh pointing down to the ground. So the hips are on the same level with one another in space. And just those beautiful waves of breath. Use the breath to work through the sensation. We can find a deep place to go. We don't want to push too hard. We also don't want to sit back too much, right? We want to find that Goldilocks level. And then pressing to your hands, lift up through your chest, tuck the right toes, bring your left leg back and up and give a little opening through your hip or back into that scorpion tail. You can go to down dog or meet me at three-legged plank. Gaze to the ground, left heel pointing behind you, breath at the top. Exhale halfway down, press to the tops of the feet. Inhale, upward facing dog, and our last down dog on that exhale. Awesome, friends. Drop to your knees. And then once you're down to your knees, you're just in a seated position and extend your feet all the way up to the top of your mat. We're going to bring in our seated forward fold here. Find the front edge of your sit bones, lift up tall through your spine, breathe in, maybe have a little bit of a bend into your knees to start so your hips can slightly tilt forward. And on your exhale, hinge forward and connect your hands to your feet, to your ankles. You could wrap a towel or strap around your feet, one end into each hand. And then the, the head bows here. And it's not that you drop your head super low. The gaze is to the ground. The crown of the head is reaching forward. And you're letting your chest reach down as you extend the spine out from the hips. And the beautiful part, if you're grabbing onto your feet, your toes, your ankles, or onto a strap or towel, is that you're able to do, again, that bind, gentle push and pull. You can always add a little more bend into your knees if you need to, or you can always feel that press as well of your calves and hamstrings down to the ground as you find that length. Think about your heels are going down and slightly pressing forward, and then you're active through your feet and your toes, slight flexion of your toes back towards your body. Get all the way down to the end of your breath. And on your inhale, reach your arms up tall in space. And as you exhale, just draw your hands to your heart center. Okay, slide your hips up just a little bit. Bend the knees and then grab your hamstrings and lift your heels just up off the ground. This length in your spine, we want to tone the shoulders in. And, and at this point, remove your hands away from your legs. This is Navasana boat pose. If you want to take this a little bit more, you can reach your legs up, so extending through your legs. But feel the core nice and strong around your low back and those shoulder blades toned in, shoulder heads down away from the ears for that upper back. Find your breath. Relax through your face. Use the breath as a reminder to keep calm and carry on while that core is working. On your next exhale, lower the feet down 
And then we'll just meet up on our backs. Just lower down, bring your knees to your chest, wrap your arms around your knees, and just give your body a little rock side to side, weight of the head totally released. Last little bit of core work. We're gonna take the legs to a leg lift position. So on a diagonal, a few feet off the ground, feel your low back connected to the, to the mat. You can leave your arms relaxed, your head and shoulders down. You could also lift your head with your hands behind your head, or you can press your palms together, point your fingers towards your toes and let your shoulders gently tone together back behind you. So remember, low back rooted and pressed. Working that breath, you're doing great. Last two rounds of breath here. Awesome, feet to the ground for bridge. So feet at hip bone distance on parallel. Walk the heels back in until they're underneath your knees. You can always reach your arms down along your sides. You should be able to touch your heels with your fingers. And then press your elbows to the ground so your hands reach up, they're bent at 90. And with your head staying relaxed, lift your hips up and then walk your shoulders in a little closer making a shelf for your heart. Interlace your fingers at your knuckles like we've done earlier in class. And then roll onto the outsides of the biceps as you press down through the arms and extend your knuckles down towards your heels. In bridge, we're feeling all corners of the feet rooted. You're lifting the hips up nice and tall. And as you work that breath, that belly breath, right, ujjayi breathing, it's a diaphragm breath, you will see the rise and fall of your belly. Stay engaged. Almost there, nice work. One more inhale, lift up. And on that exhale, release the arms and vertebrae by vertebrae, come down. Draw the knees to your chest. And then take the peace on fingers to your big toes and let your knees open wide for happy baby. Bottoms of the feet are pointing to the sky. Ankles are stacked above your knees and you're pulling down on the frame, pulling down on the big toes and taking a little rock side to side. We'll release and then take a stack of the knees over to the left side of the mat. So roll onto the outside edge of your left hip. Reach and extend your right arm to the right and take your gaze out to the right. Let your right shoulder gently pull down towards the floor as your left hand gently pulls the knees closer down to the, into the left. Let your right shoulder get close, you got it. Stay with your breathing. And start to find those areas where we can just release out our tension. Start to let gravity just take over on gently pulling us into the pose as we breathe around it. down to the end of the breath that you're on and then we'll slow motion switch our sides out so now stacking your knees off to the right onto the outside edge of that right hip 
reaching your left arm to the left and just turning your gaze out across your left fingertips. Again, think about your left shoulder gently pulling down towards the ground, right hand gently pulling the knees closer down on the right. Using those exhales to find that moment where your body gets to fully release and fully open. Awesome, last deep round of breath here. And from the end of your breath, we're gonna do one last hug of the knees to our chest, just rocking it out, massaging out the hip sacrum and the low back. And then we'll take a couple minutes for our final resting pose, Shavasana. And all you need to, you need to do here is lengthen your legs, let the weight of the feet relax open. Relax your arms and let go of controlling the breath as you close your eyes. You want to think about the body is just taking back over on the automatic breathing. And then we're just allowing stillness to come in for a couple of minutes here. Nice and slow, just bring life into your body. Start to move your fingers, start to move your toes. Reach and extend your arms to the wall back behind you. Extend your toes towards the wall in front of you and roll out your ankles, roll out your wrists. Deep in your breath. Roll the weight of your body onto your side, curl up into a fetal position.
will meet in a comfortable cross-legged position or whatever pose you'd like to end class with. If you're choosing to end class up on your sit bones, find the front edge of your sit bones, just lifting the f pulling the flesh away from them and walking back just a moment. And then we can take an inhale just to extend the arms wide and tall. And on the exhale, bring the hands into your heart center. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether it is clear to you or not, no doubt the universe is unfolding exactly as it should. The light in me greets the light in you. Namaste. Right on, friends. Thanks so much for joining me for another great yoga class. Um, as always, please uh, like, hit subscribe, share the video. It helps out a ton. Um, if you'd like to make a donation for taking the class, I've got my Venmo ID in the description. And then I also just put a blog post out about one of my favorite poems, Desiderata. And the last stanza that I said uh, right before I said namaste is from that poem. It's a beautiful poem. But uh, yeah, go to my website, check out the blog, and have a fantastic one. I will catch you next time. Much love. Girl, you are so tasty. You're sweet as love.